Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Stitch Sessions, and welcome to installment number two of our Pillow Talk Crochet Series. If you're new here, I'm Karen, and I adore crafting with all things to do with crochet. And uh, the top of every month, we are working on a project to do with our crochet series. And this year, it is Pillow Talk. We are going to be doing a crochet pillow project the first Wednesday of every month. So for the month of February, we are creating this beautiful, a gorgeous pinwheel pillow. I cannot talk enough about how much I adore this design and how it came out. The beautiful thing is this is also a great way to use up some scrap yarn. So I use two colors, but you can certainly do four colors if you really, really wanted to. The great thing is, I know it looks kind of complicated, but what we do is we just simply create a bunch of triangles, right angle triangles, and then we sew them all together to create two separate panels. So you've got a front and a back. And then we just simply sew it all together along three sides. And for this project, we are using a zipper closure. Now, don't let that intimidate you if you're a little bit new. I have a separate tutorial, which you may have seen a couple of weeks ago, on how I hand sew my zippers onto my crochet projects. So if you're not a sewer or don't know anything about using a sewing machine, do not fret. I will take you through how I hand sewed my zipper on here. And if you haven't seen that tutorial already, that will also be linked in this video, as well as in the description box down below. So are you guys excited to get started on your February pillow? I am. So let's get going. Let's talk about first the materials we're going to need to create our pinwheel pillow, and then let's get you stitching. Okay, so let's talk about the yarn that I'm using for this project. I'm using the Caron Cakes or the Cotton Angel Cakes. Now, Caron has different iterations of this cake. I would say every season or every two seasons. So usually you'll see a new iteration of this in the summer and then maybe mid fall to winter. So the this traditionally sometimes is just called the Caron Cotton Cakes. And so I believe, now I've had this cake for a little while. So they may still have this iteration, but it might be called something else. But in any case, you're always gonna find some fashion of a Caron cake. Now, what I love about the cotton blends is that the texture just makes it so lovely and easy for different seasons. Like I like the bit of the cotton for summer projects or spring projects because you can kind of go either way with them. So whoops, this contains 60% cotton and 40% acrylic, which I, I really like. It is a medium four weight yarn and it is machine washable and dryable. That is the other thing I love about these cakes. Makes it much more easier to maintain. Now the hook size they recommend is a five millimeter hook, but I am going to be using a six millimeter hook, which is known as a J or a size 10 as well. And I just like going up a hook size sometimes um, just to make the stitches sit a little bit more relaxed. Now I have two of these cakes. I've already used some of the first one to create this uh, triangle here. Now this is to create one full pillow. You won't necessarily use two full cakes for a pillow. I, I had already used some of the other cake for something else. So if you want to do a set of two pillows, just to be on the safe side, I would maybe pick up four, especially if you know that you're going to use it for something else. I think you'd be okay with three. But again, I always like to err on the side of caution by always having an extra. These cakes come in a 250 gram ball, which gives you 530 yards or 485 meters, okay? You're also going to need a zipper for your pillow if you don't want to sew it completely in. And uh, you'll need an 18 inch zipper if you are going to create that 20 inch pillow. And uh, mine is in the color of white because that is the trim I'm gonna use for this pillow. And of course, make sure that you have 
white thread and a thread needle so that you can sew your zipper in different than a yarn needle, right? So a yarn needle is like that. It's a lot thicker. Thread needle is what you're gonna use to sew in your zipper. And the other thing you wanna make sure is, of course, always have a yarn needle to sew in any of your ends. There's gonna be a lot of sewing also in this particular project and a pair of scissors to snip off your yarn. So let's get started on creating our motifs. Okay, so I already have one of them done. And so essentially the pillow is gonna be put together by constructing a number of right angle triangles. So that means we work from the bottom and one side just continues to go straight up. So this is our right angle or our 90 degree angle. And the other side will continuously have decreases until it meets back up at the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our first chain row. And then on one side, we're always gonna decrease. We're gonna come and then no decrease on the other side. We're gonna continue and every time we come to that other side, we're gonna decrease. So you're essentially, every second row, you're gonna decrease at the end. Every other row, you're gonna decrease at the beginning. If that doesn't make sense to you, do not worry. I'm gonna take you through it as we go through it right now. You'll notice too that there's a little bit of this subtle texture, which I've mentioned, and that's because we're gonna be working into the back loops only. So we are good to go. So here we go. By the way, the other thing I love about these cakes is it's very easy to find the center pull and then you can just work and it comes out without your cake going all over the place. So that's one of the main things I love about this. Okay, so you want to begin by placing a slip knot on your hook. Just like that. And we're going to start by creating a foundation chain row of 36 chains. So you're just gonna loop, pull through, and pull through. Be cognizant that as you chain, notice I'm kind of being very relaxed, not too loosey-goosey, but just keep it nice and relaxed, okay? 36 chains. Okay, once you've done your 36 chains, just make sure it's lying nice and consistent, just like that, you don't want it to be twisted. And now we're going to find the second chain from our hook. Remember the loop on the hook never counts as a stitch. So we're gonna count one and two, and into that chain, we're gonna place a single crochet. But what I'm gonna do for this project is I'm actually gonna turn my chain over so I can work into the back bumps. See those bumps of the stitch. So I'm just gonna help this one along here, which you might have to do. And I'm gonna place a single crochet. Okay, and then I'm gonna go into the next one. And I'm gonna do the same thing. And that is what you're gonna do into every single stitch until you get to the end of your row. So at the end of row one, you will actually have 35 stitches in total. Okay, so go ahead and finish that and I'll meet you at the end of row one. Okay, so I finished row number one and my row looks like that. And this is one of the reasons why sometimes I do like to work into the back bump. See how it gives it that beautiful little finished edge? Just love that. So now we're gonna go on to row number two. Now you'll notice that row number one, we had no decreases at all. So I like to call row number one our establishing row. So we're gonna go into row number two and you're always gonna chain one and turn your work. Now, just a little something to help guide you. The side that has the tail will never have a decrease. So if you're ever confused as to when do I get to decrease, when do I don't, uh, remember that the side with the tail never has a decrease. So once we chain one, we're just gonna go right back into the very first stitch and we are gonna single crochet. Now, the other thing that you wanna pay attention to is we are gonna work into the back loops only of the stitches. So instead of going in through the full stitch where you get both loops, 
I'm gonna go into, so I see the tops of the stitches here, I'm gonna pick up the back loop, and that's the one that's furthest away from me, and I'm gonna place a single crochet. And now I'm gonna go into the next stitch and single crochet. It's really easy, right? Like if you know your single crochets, you're good to go. Just have to look for those back loops. See, so you can see that the front loop is starting to push forward a little bit. All right, so go ahead and finish row number two into the back loops only. What I want you to do is when you have two stitches left, I'm gonna meet up with you. So if you want, press pause, finish row two, and leave two stitches, and I will take you through what's gonna happen next. Okay, so I've come up to the end of row two and I've got two stitches left. Remember that turning chain is a stitch there. And so now you can really see that by working into the back loops, it creates that nice little ridge there. So we had 35 stitches in row one. And so row two, we're gonna decrease by one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the next stitch and pick up the back loop, pull up a loop, and now Without resolving that yet, we're gonna go into the next stitch, which is the last one, and you're going to insert and pick up another loop. So you've got three loops on your hook. You're now gonna yarn over and pull through all three. And you've now done your first decrease stitch. Once you've done that, you'll know now that you have 34 stitches in row two. Okay, so you're gonna chain one now and you're gonna turn your work. So when you've just finished a decrease, you need to begin with a decrease, okay? So now row number three begins with a decrease. So we've just done a chain one, and I like to do the beginning decreases just slightly different sometimes. So instead of going right in- Okay, so I'm coming up to the end of row number three. And this is the side that has no decrease because I've got my tail here, so that reminds me. So now you can see that your work is slowly starting to take shape. You might not be able to tell quite yet, but it's starting to slant in. So what we're going for is to create this effect. So you see with each row, this side continues to slant in. So this is the beginning here, and you can see it's matching up nicely. So what you're gonna do now is you're going to repeat row number two and row number three until you basically have no stitches left. So I can tell you you're gonna continue to do this for a total of 35 rows, but your work will tell you because eventually you decrease the number of stitches. So remember in row two, we went down to 34 stitches. And at the end of row three, you're down to 33 stitches. So you keep decreasing until you have basically one stitch left at the top. And that's what forms the right angle. So you have the same number of stitches across that you do the number of rows up. So I have 35 stitches and 35 rows up, okay? And basically, that is it. Once you complete your triangle, you are going to need to replicate this a total of 16 times. So we use eight of these triangles for the front panel, and then we use another eight to create the back panel of your pillow. So you're gonna press pause, you're gonna go do something else or watch something else, listen to a podcast, and you are going to create 16 of these triangles. And when you're done that, you're gonna come back and visit with me again, and we're gonna talk about how to place your triangles and then how to construct the actual pillow. It's super simple, but it just takes a little bit of time to create these panels. And the other thing you'll notice with this one, got a little tail here, a little, not a little, a really long tail. So leave an extra long tail at the end because you'll wanna use these tails to help you sew these motifs together. Um, 
it's just a way of doing it. You don't necessarily have to actually, now that I think about it, you could just snip off your yarn, weave in your end, and then cut your tails. But I just like to do it this way. So at the end, I just left a tail that was, you can do double the length of the side. I did triple because you just never know with sewing, it, it um, shrinks the length a lot. And especially if you might want to go down this side here, it just looks a little bit longer than this side. So that was the only thing that I just wanted to remind you to leave an extra long tail. And that's it. So happy crocheting, happy creating your motifs. And I'll meet you back here in a little bit to put them all together. Okay, I just really quickly wanted to show you something at the end because um, it might feel a little bit weird as you get to uh, less and less stitches. So right now I have three stitches left and I have just done my non-increased side. So I'm gonna chain one. I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna place a single crochet right away into that first stitch. Like that. And now I've got these two stitches left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert into one, and then I'm gonna insert into the second one and create a decrease. So now what happens is I have two stitches left. So I'm gonna chain one, turn my work, and both of these stitches will get decreased together. So I'm actually just gonna skip this first one and go immediately into the last one and then I will have one single crochet and that leaves me with one stitch. Remember this chain one over that skipped stitch consists of a decrease. So we now have one stitch remaining and we're at the final row and that's created the point, the top point of our right angle triangle. So that is basically how you would get to the end. I thought I, would, I should hop on here because it might seem a little daunting. So that's it. And then once you've done all of your eight pieces, like I said before, I'm gonna meet back with you here and talk about the layout and sewing them together. Okay guys, so I have finished all of my panels. And so I've started to lay out how I want them to sit nicely together. And I love that effect. So here's kind of my method that I used. So my pinky triangles, I made sure that they were all, all of their ridges were sitting horizontally. Okay. All of the white ones, their ridges are sitting vertically. So it took me a while to kind of figure out how to flip the triangle so that I had that situation occur. But I finally found the right combination and I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna get ready to sew them all together now, which I'm gonna take you through. I'm gonna start you with one, but you'll notice something. All of our tails don't necessarily work with us. For example, like I've got this long tail that's at the top, this long tail that's at the bottom. In essence, that would work, right? So you can have this tail sewing this down this side, and then you can have this tail sewing up that side, which is great. The only problem is now this one has a tail on the same side as well. So some of the triangles, you may actually have to just snip this tail and use it to sew the opposite side. So again, here the tail is up here, which I can use to sew up this side here. And this tail is also up here, but that's okay. I can use it to sew that down there. Now, this side will have no tail. So that means I've got to take it from here and sew here. So I'm just quickly kind of explaining that to you because you may sit and arrange your triangles and go, wait a minute, this tail isn't sitting in the right spot. Because these are right angle triangles, that's just the way it falls. And I think you're going to have four of your eight seams that may happen too. So, but don't panic, just snip your, your yarn from that one side and start from the other side. So there's the layout. And now let's just kind of get into how to sew your triangles together. Okay. So I'm going to start with these two bottom triangles here. So again, you can see the white is in the vertical 
and the pink is in the horizontal. Okay, so I'm gonna just get my tail organized here. There we go. And so remember that each triangle is 35 rows tall with 35 stitches across. So when you are butting them up against each other in opposite directions, you've got rows that are gonna be sewn into stitches. So they should be fairly easy to find. You're going to match up each row with each stitch, okay? So I'm just gonna thread my yarn through my yarn needle. And the cool thing about this project, because of the way we're setting up the triangles, um, it doesn't really matter which side is the right side facing up because they look the same. So what you wanna do is you wanna just fold your triangles over so that the edge you wanna sew is along the top here, okay? So this ends off at the last row, which is one stitch. And so what you wanna do here is find the very first stitch, which is right there. And that's why I was really happy we worked into the back bumps of that chain row. It makes it a lot easier. Um, not that you can't the other way, but it makes it much easier to identify your first stitch, which is right there. So what I wanna do is even though I'm here already, I'm gonna go in the end of this first row, just picking up two loops, and I'm gonna pick up the first stitch, which is right there, and I'm gonna bring my yarn through, okay? And I am going to use the mattress stitch for this. I've been using this stitch a lot lately. I just find I really like the result. So I'm gonna go in through the front and then come back up through the back. So I'm just gonna insert my needle from behind and I am picking up both loops. Sometimes you've seen me do techniques where I only pick up a few loops, but in this case, I am working through the whole stitch. So I'm gonna go in there and now the next row, okay, is going to be right here like that, okay? So remember we worked into the back loops only. So you see how each, every other row um, kind of dips in, that's how you can identify it. So this was a bumped out row. This one is a dipped in row, I call it. So I'm just gonna go in through there and now I'm gonna go in through the front. So this is a ridge row, which is bumped out. So I'm just gonna pick up a couple loops from the outside edge. So this is a little trickier to identify because it's the side of a row. But as long as you pick up a couple loops, you should be okay. And then I go across to the corresponding loop, which is right there, a stitch I should say, and then go through. And that's pretty much how you're gonna work it. Now I'm gonna come in from the back with the next stitch and find the next row, which is a dip row or a valley row, I call it. So I'm just gonna insert somewhere in there, picked up a couple loops and come through. Now, the idea here is you want it to sit snug, but you don't want it to bunch, okay? And so you can see, you're gonna see a little bit of the stitching there on the opposite color, but that is part of what makes this design so cool. Now I'm gonna go in through the ridge row, picking up a couple of loops here, and then finding the corresponding stitch across the way there. And pulling through. So just wanna do a, a few of these. So when you open up your work, see? Your stitch is gonna sit nicely together. And I kind of wanted this boho type of look, so you will see the opposing um, stitch color just ever so slightly, okay? And, I, and actually, I really like that. It's very subtle, but it really adds to it. And I love how the opposite textures are sitting one next to each other. So this is what you're gonna do to sew all of your triangles together. So once I've done this one, I come to the edge, I'm gonna tie it off. Then I will come back and I will take my next triangle and I will do the same. So I'm gonna use this tail for this one. I'm gonna fold that edge over and sew it. And then once these three are sewn, I take the next one and fold this over. Now this tail, see it's sitting up here, so you will have to snip this tail off and then use it to sew to the white. So pretty straightforward. You'll notice though sometimes that the, 
the raw edge, I call it, is um, very stretchy. And when you're sewing it against the, the chain edge, it might not be as stretchy. So don't be afraid to just take it and stretch it a little bit so that it does sit nice and flush. Remember, it's the same number of rows to number of stitches, so you should be fine. And it'll sit just nice and lovely. And by the way, if you're more experienced and want to use different types of stitching, like the whip stitch or the slip stitch method, you are more than welcome to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and sew up my panels. So this is the first panel with the eight. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other panel once I've arranged my triangles. And then we'll be ready to put our full pillow together. Okay guys, so I've sewn up my square. Look at how good it looks, I just love it. I love how those triangles now create that true pinwheel effect. And I am super happy with it. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to crochet a border around it before we take the two sides and put them together. So I've actually already done the first side. So let me just get this one out of the way. And of course it's rippling a little bit because remember our white yarn, even though it's the same weight on the label, it doesn't sit the same, but we're not really worried about this at all because once it stretches over the pillow, it's gonna be A-OK. -okay. So you can see here, I went in with a row of white yarn first, just to kind of solidify the white and anchor it around. And then I came back in with that coral color and just really, I thought the coral would just really anchor the, the color in and really make the pinwheel portion pop from there. So that's all we're gonna do now. And uh, it was two rows, one of the white and one of the coral. So that's what I'm gonna get you started on now. You are gonna do this border for each panel separately before we bring them together, okay? Okay, so we're bringing our white yarn in and I'm just gonna start off by placing a slip knot on my hook. And what I forgot to mention just momentarily is before we even do the single crochet row, we are gonna do a slip stitch finishing row or round, I should say. And you'll see why this method will come in really handy to giving your project, the edges of your projects, just like this, a really beautiful finished edge where you are sewing motifs together. So see how lovely that looks? So I'm gonna show you how we achieve that with the slip stitch method. So you're just gonna start somewhere, and I like to start maybe in a corner somewhere here. And actually, I'm going to start here where I already have stitches. So remember, some of your edges are going to have stitches and some of them are going to be along the raw edge. So I'm going to just insert my hook right into this kind of like a little corner space here. So it's the first stitch there. I'm going to just slip stitch to join my yarn here. Pulled it through, and then I pulled it through, just like that. Okay, and now all I wanna do is I wanna go into each stitch, and I'm just gonna slip stitch. So this actually is my foundation chain row of this triangle, so I can tell it's just a little bit snug. So you might have to help the hook through a little bit. There we go. So I'm just gonna pull that through. And I know you're all familiar with slip stitches, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna slip stitch. Really, really do not pull this too tautly, right? Because um, you really want it to be a little bit relaxed. I'm gonna go into the next stitch here. Again, because this is a foundation chain row, I'm gonna have to help it along a little bit. Insert, pull up, and then slip stitch. See how I'm leaving it very relaxed? You'll see why when we go on to the next round. But for now, just continue keeping your slip stitches nice and relaxed. So you should have one stitch, one slip stitch for each stitch 
all the way across. Okay, see, so it's just creating a nice little finished edge here. So do that all the way, and um, you're gonna do that all the way around, but I am gonna meet up with you here because now we're gonna be working across the raw edge, and this is where it's really gonna become apparent that how, how important this uh, slip stitch method will be. Okay, so I've made my way across, and I've got 35 slip stitches, just like that, okay? And so I just have the join here. So now I'm going into my raw edge, but I just wanna come somewhere over here in the center. So again, you just, you're trying to create this nice finished edge to work into. So I'm just gonna find a spot there and I'm gonna slip stitch through there. So this is what's gonna give you a nice continuous line from the coral section to the white section, see that? So now it's coming through. And now you're just gonna work into the sides of your rows, which you know you have 35 rows as well. So now we've got a slip stitch into a ridge row, and now we're gonna slip stitch into a dip row. I really wanna try and not just have one loop. So I always try and maybe pick up another loop if I can. So it might mean dipping down just a bit. And then here's a ridge row and slip stitch. Here is a dip row. See how there's only one loop? For me, that's just a little bit too flimsy. So I like to kind of find an extra loop there. Okay, and then I just continue on till the end of this side slip stitch, again, keeping it nice and comfortable. And then I'll just meet you at the corner there just to talk about how we're gonna come around the bend using our slip stitches. Okay, so I've come to the end of the first side. So now you can see that that raw edge just has a little bit more of a straighter fluid edge. See how it just melds nicely from the white to the coral. And then once we do subsequent rows, you'll see how that's just gonna just merge so beautifully. So in the back, you're gonna have a little bit of texture, just like here, you're just gonna have what looks like a little bit of a ridge, that's totally normal. Now you've come to your corner and you've done a slip stitch into your last stitch of your white side. We're now gonna go around the bend and come around to do your coral sets. You're gonna continue on. So once you hit your last stitch, what you wanna do is chain one and then find the next stitch. So now I'm working into raw edges again. So this is the end of that first or last row, depending on how you look at it. And you're going to slip stitch. Now, some people might chain two for that corner. Because this is the slip stitch round, I actually want this to sit a little bit more snugly to the edge of the panel. And then we can, we can expand to chain two in um, the next two rounds. But that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to chain one. You can chain two, totally up to you, especially if you're more of a tight crocheter. Uh, okay, so then we just go into the next, so see this is the edges of rows. And then I go into the dip row here, slip stitch, okay. So there you go. So you've done, we've done one side, I've come around the bend and I'm gonna do the other side. So you're gonna slip stitch across. So these slip stitches are now gonna give us something to work into a little bit of us along a little bit of a straighter edge for our subsequent rounds. So now continue doing that all the way to the other corner, chain one, come around or chain two, continue, continue. And you're gonna do that all the way around until you come back to the very beginning. Then I'm gonna meet up with you there and talk about our official first round of white using our single crochet stitches. Okay, so I have now finished my slip stitches all the way around. So you can see that it just gives it this little bit of a border. And it may not look like it now, but it's gonna give 
the edges a little bit more structure. So see there, you can already see it's got a little bit more structure. I know it's going over the bend here, but now as we go into our first official row, so here we kind of went into the edges. That's why I like doing this because you'll see once we do this row, all this little uncertainty, these little bumpy edges, they go away. So I've just slip stitched to join here. So I'm gonna begin by chaining one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right back into this very first slip stitch and I'm gonna insert into the full stitch. So I'm gonna go right under there and I'm gonna go under both loops. So I am working under the full slip stitch. And I'm just gonna single crochet. So this first one might be a little tighter. Whoops, there we go. Yeah, that first one's always a little bit on the tighter side. And single crochet. And that's what I'm gonna do all the way around. So see, that one was a little easier. I go under the slip stitch and single crochet. Really straight forward. And then you'll see as we get closer to the end of the row that this slip stitch round is really what's giving us this nice defined line around your pillow face. So go ahead and do that. This is pretty easy. One single crochet into every single slip stitch. And then I'm just gonna meet you at the corner here just to kind of help you go around the bend as usual. Okay, so I finished my first side and I have 70 stitches from one end to the other. Look at how crisp this line is now. Isn't that beautiful? It's just really lovely. So now you've got a little bit more of a crisper line to work with. And don't worry that it flares a little bit here. Remember, we're gonna stretch it over a pillow. So it's gonna all work out beautifully. So what you have to keep in mind now is that we're going to work into the corners and we just wanna place, so I've got the chain one here from the slip stitch that I did. And you're always just gonna place a single crochet chain one you could chain two if you are a tighter crocheter i'm going to keep it as chain one for me because i want it to sit a little bit more snugly so single crochet chain one and back into that same stitch single crochet and that's going to give us our little corner there okay and so for the next round we'll be able to work into that if it helps i would put a, a stitch marker here and I just happen to have one here. I would put a stitch marker where the chain one is because it's a tighter corner, maybe trickier to see. So it'll just help to remind you where to place into your corner. Otherwise you can chain two to help you come around the bend a little bit more. So when you do that, you're actually gonna have 72 stitches on each side. So that means your whole pillow will have 288 stitches at the end of round number two of your border, okay? And so the rest is pretty straightforward. You see, you just keep doing one single crochet into each slip stitch. And do remember that we are working into the full stitch. Sometimes people might think that you're working only into the back loop. You really don't wanna do that. You wanna pick up the full stitch. And again, that's what's gonna give you this lovely crisp line, okay? So you're gonna do that all the way around every time you come to a corner, your chain one, you're gonna place single crochet, chain one or two, single crochet, and then continue on. So press pause and finish off round number two, and then I will meet up with you to bring back our coral yarn to add one more little detail round to finish off round number three of our border here. Okay, so I have completed a round number two of my border and you can see just how crisp that line is now coming around the side. Just love it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the next round, which means bringing back our coral color to accentuate the border and then our panel will be complete. So let's bring our coral color back here. And we're gonna place a slip knot. 
And I'm just gonna find a corner here and I will slip stitch to join my yarn just like this. Still using the single crochet stitches and then I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna single crochet back into that same space there. Okay, then I'm gonna chain one or you can chain two as usual and I'm gonna go back into that corner and single crochet. So I'm actually creating a full corner um, for this round because I am gonna be um, snipping my yarn and fastening off so I'm not too worried about creating a partial corner as you may have seen me do. Okay, so then I'm just gonna continue on from here and I'm just gonna place one single crochet into each stitch like we've been doing before. So I just wanna make sure I don't miss this first stitch here. Really straightforward, one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. It's much easier now because we've got full stitches to work into. And once you come to the end, in each corner, you're gonna place a single crochet chain one or two and single crochet. So go ahead and do that all the way around and your final border round will be complete. So go ahead and do that and then I will meet you back here once you're finished this round. Okay guys, I have completed my panel. In fact, I've completed two panels, which is what you're gonna need. So once I finish doing that border, your work looks something like this. It just gives it this really nice anchoring, especially when you come around there. Just love how that came out. So it is gonna probably feel a little ripply right now. That is a-okay. So if you have just completed your first panel with me right now, then congratulations, you are halfway done. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna put together your second panel and you're gonna create the border exactly how I did this one. When you're done that, you're gonna come back here and meet me at this spot because now we're gonna talk about bringing these two panels together. So that's what I'm gonna do next. If you haven't put together your second panel, now's the time to do it. If you have, then you're gonna continue on with me right now. Okay, so once you have both of your panels put together, you want to make sure that you have your wrong sides facing out so you can definitely see this is my wrong side and this is my wrong side. So what you wanna do is you wanna put the wrong sides facing together and you want to stack these one on top of the other. And again, right now, everything's gonna be rippling and it's gonna look like it's not all gonna fit together. But remember, as long as you have the equal number of stitches, you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna sew up three sides of our panels. So I'm gonna start from the top here, come down, sew them up along the bottom and then up along the side. I'm gonna leave a fourth one open. Of course, we need to leave a fourth one open to insert our pillow. But before that happens, I'm going to sew on the zipper part. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna seam up our side. So that's what I'm gonna take you to do right now. Okay, so once you've come up with the corner you're gonna begin with, we're gonna reintroduce our white yarn here. Okay. And instead of starting right at the corner, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back about three stitches. So we have one, two and three. And that is where we're gonna insert our hook. So remember, this is one side of the opening where we're gonna place our zipper. So we just wanna have a little bit of a lip on each edge so that the tail of the zipper can get tucked under and where the beginning of our zip will start right there, okay? So then I go to the back panel, I do the same thing. There's my corner, I count one, two, three, and I insert into that, okay? So from there, I just pull my yarn through. And then I'm just gonna chain one right there, okay? And that's gonna secure it right now and then the tail will eventually get put underneath. 
Now the technique we're gonna use is we are going to go into the back loop of the front panel, and then we're gonna go into the corresponding panel, uh, the corresponding stitch, and we're gonna go into the front loop here. So you see, the loops that are closest to each other are the ones getting worked. Then you will pull up the white yarn and you're just gonna slip stitch through all of those. So if we do that again, we go to the next stitch, go into the back loop, might be a little tight here, closer to the corner, and then you find the corresponding stitch and go in through the front loop. So not the back loop, but the front loop. And slip stitch to join. Now, once you get to the corner, you're just gonna keep doing what we've been doing, okay? So you're still gonna find the back loop. So some of these are chained, so they're gonna be a little bit tight. So you're just gonna help it through. And then I find the front loop right there. And once I reach the actual corner, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna chain one. And that's just gonna give me a little bit of breathing room to come around the bend here. But I just continue on as usual. I go into the back loop here, and then the front loop there. And remember, you should have the exact same number of stitches, so everything is gonna match up beautifully on the other side. Just like that. So why I'm using the back loops is because see how the front loops stay there? And it's gonna create this nice, beautiful, crisp line and finished edge on your work. So you're gonna now just continue doing that all the way down. And when you get to your corner, you're gonna do the same thing we just did in the first corner. You go down the second side and the third side. And when you come back up to the other side, you'll come around the corner and you'll go in You'll just come up and you'll go three stitches in before you stop. So that will give us our opening for our zipper. So this will take you a little while, but you wanna press pause now, finish slip stitching all three of your sides, and then we've got one more add-on before we put our insert in, and that's to sew on our zipper. Okay guys, I have sewn my zipper onto my pillow and it is ready to go. I love it. So here is the moment of truth. I'm gonna take my pillow insert and I'm going to place it and I'm gonna insert it into my pillow. Or my pillowcase, I should say. So you can see it's going to sit nice and snug. So you always want to make sure, sorry guys, this is tricky to get all in the camera here, but you always want to make sure that you really kind of pinch your corners and bring them right into that corner so that they are inserted nice and evenly into the pillowcase. Okay, and this is nice and snug, which is just how we want it. And there we have it. Wow, guys, look at how good that looks. Our pinwheel pillow is complete. Look at how nice and stuffed that is. And see how it all smooths out. So if you had any like little rumply or ripply or bubbly edges, they all smooth out because of the pillow insert. Wow. Okay, I have to say, this is definitely my favorite so far. I know we're still early in the year, but I just love how the pillow closure is so neat and tidy. And I love the design. I just really love how it all came together. And as always, anytime I have an idea and I can actually make it come to life, it just really just really, I don't know, I get really excited. I just enjoy it so much. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed working on this 
pillow project this month for the month of February. So if you have any questions, you guys know, leave me a comment in the comment box down below or comments regarding the design or the construction or if you had any issues at all. And you know you can always email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. Sometimes you guys like to send me emails directly, which is great. I'm more than happy to answer any questions uh, or help you out with any issues you may have. Look at that pillow, so excited. Now don't forget, make sure to come visit me on the website, crochetcrafty.com. Lots of cool, cool material for you guys. I've got sizing charts, written patterns. You can check out my Etsy shop and lots of other great, fantastic goodies. Thanks so much, guys, for hanging out with me. By the way, if you're new here and you enjoyed this project, I invite you to click that subscribe button. Come hang out with me and the rest of our crochet friends every Wednesday morning when I upload a brand new tutorial. And don't forget, this month's crochet series is Pillow Talk. So at the first Wednesday of every month, we will be taking on a pillow project. So in the meantime, guys, have an amazing day. Happy crocheting. I hope you really enjoy working on your pinwheel pillow. By the way, don't forget to tag me on Instagram. Come say hi to me. You can find me at The Stitch Sessions as well as Facebook. So take good care of yourselves, guys, and I will see you all in next week's session. Bye-bye.